Norwich has some lost stations. Shall we explore them? The county town of Norfolk and the regional capital of East Anglia, Norwich is steeped in history and, in their way, the railways and stations which serve this city have played their part. Today, Norwich is served by what was once known as Norwich Thorpe Station. Opened in 1886, it is 114 miles from London Liverpool Street and is the terminus for services from Cambridge, Liverpool, Lowestoft, Sheringham, Stansted Airport and Great Yarmouth. To the east of the station, situated between the Great Eastern and Wherry Lines, is the Crown Point Traction Motive Depot, responsible for servicing the fleet of trains which operates on these lines. But if we step back in time, we find that there were a number of other stations which served the people of this city. We will begin by examining what was once Norwich City Station. This was the southern terminus of the Midland and Great Northern Joint Railways Melton Constable Line and, as can be seen in this picture, dating from the early 20th century, it boasted an impressive building. The station site was extensive. The main building, seen in the previous picture, features here towards the top right of the photograph. Hereabouts were facilities for both goods and passengers, but also for the service, repair and stabling of locomotives and rolling stock. Bomb damage during the Second World War raised the main station building to the ground and, in time, this was replaced by buildings bearing a more functional aesthetic. By the end of the late 1950s, it was concluded that the Midland and Great Northern Joint Railway was operating at an unsustainable loss. Thus it was that Norwich City Station closed to passengers on the 2nd of March 1959. Goods traffic lingered on for a further 10 years before the final closure of the station on the 24th of February 1969. Today, the presence of both the station and the railway which served it are celebrated, whether in the form of the crossing gates in the background, or this kunst in the foreground. Perhaps more impressive are the efforts of volunteers to clear the vegetation and reveal what remains of Norwich City's platform. Here they are back in the day as viewed from the north. And here we face north from the platform limit. Note the engine shed to the right of the picture. Here's approximately the same view today. This is the site of the engine shed as previously noted, exposed thanks to the Friends of Norwich City Station. Let's take one last look south towards the city. And the view from the past. I hope you are enjoying this film so far. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, like, share and hit your notification bell. Stick around to see some remarkable lost stations later on in the film. Should any of these stations have closed at all? Today, the course of the former railway north is now occupied by the Marriott's Way, a very fine public foot and cycle path. And it is this route which takes us towards our next lost station, Helsden, some two miles from Norwich City Station. This delightful looking station opened on the 2nd of December 1882, closing on the 15th of September 1952, six years before passenger services were withdrawn along the rest of the line. Today, a good portion of the platform has been cleared and a new running-in board is affixed to original posts. We stand on the platform. The last train that passed through here was the demolition train, which lifted the line and much else. But features such as this original milepost have been restored and replaced in position. We look south in this view from about 1950, and from a similar perspective today. Before we depart, take a look at this picture with the station on the far left and a boat occupying the platform. Built on a floodplain, waterways replaced railways here thanks to flooding in 1912. So we continue towards our next lost station. Drayton represents our most northerly lost station on the very outskirts of Norwich and our final station on the former Midland and Great Northern Joint Railway. 
Few satisfying photographs of the station are to be found, but here we face Drayton from the north, with the main station building on the right. Viewed from the south today, the station has been utterly swept away since the station's closure in 1959. Fine waiting rooms, such as this, have been replaced by less appealing light industrial units. And only the street sign betrays the station's presence. We leave behind the northernmost station on our trip and head across the city to our easterly most station at Whitlingham. This evocative photograph speaks of the character, pride and care that went into constructing and maintaining even the quietest station, a far cry from the entirely functional and glorified porter cabins of today. All that survives of the station now is this fine footbridge across the line. Shall we go up to the top? The station was known as Whitlingham Junction because, to the station's east, we see the Wherry Lines heading off for Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft, whilst bearing north the branch line to Cromer and Sheringham. And the same view seen here many years ago. Here, this superb colourised photograph also brings the station to life. All gone now, all gone. The station closed to passengers in 1955 and freight in 1964. We glance back towards Norwich from the footbridge and imagine the sight and sound of steam making its way to the coast. And the view today as we travel back into the city, where we explore what remains of our penultimate lost station, Norwich Victoria. Once the terminus of the Great Eastern Railway in Norwich, until this was surpassed by Norwich Thorpe, Norwich Victoria Station was an impressive looking building, with a striking rotunda for a booking hall. The station opened in 1849, closing to passengers in 1916. Now, there is nothing left of the station buildings from the same position on Queen's Road. However, to the south of the station, we take in the railway's route into Victoria Station from Southwell Road. Looking north from the same bridge, we notice the railway's substantial presence. The railway may have closed to passengers in 1916, but it remained open to goods until 1966, with the branch to the coal depot closing finally in 1986. The area a shadow of its former self. And the same view today, after much redevelopment. This was the site of the station proper. The buildings here were largely demolished after the Second World War, with the engine shed and turntable having been removed previously in 1926. Even towards the end of its life, the station handled a great deal of goods. In a 12-week period ending in October 1958, this amounted to just over 23,000 tonnes. But this was not enough to save this station, nor this branch of the line. Now, only the filled-in portals of Grove Road Bridge on the south side of the station site hint at the railway's presence here. Saving the best until last, we travel towards our final and perhaps most striking lost station, Trouts. Taken from Rackendale Bridge, this photo of the station, taken after closure, profiles its fine buildings and platforms well. Approximately the same view today. Whilst its buildings and its outline remain on the Norwich cityscape, closer inspection reveals that this is now a sorry sight. Boarded up and overgrown, the distinctive napped flint walls slowly crumble. Nature tightens its grip as mankind loosens its own. The entrance to the station is now used by a tractor dealership, and on this occasion this channel was kindly granted access to take a closer look. Here are the gables of the station's north end, and the rampant infestation of plant life. The main station entrance is barred, but open. Shall we have a look? Inside, the site speaks for itself. As close as we can get to standing on the western platform, we see the platform on the station's eastern side. To the south of the station, this goods shed is in a similar condition to the main building. 
It is worth noting that the station opened and closed several times over the years. First opening in July 1845, it closed three years later in 1848, reopening again three years later in 1851 and closing in 1916. The station opened once more in 1919, closing finally 20 years later in 1939. But this wasn't the end of the story, because curiously, on the 28th of March 1986, the station was reopened to act as a temporary terminus for trains from the south, whilst Norwich Station was electrified. But its resurrection was fleeting, for as soon as electrification was completed, the station closed once more three days later on the 31st of March 1986, and has remained shut ever since. The station's recent Grade 2 listing will do little to reverse its fortunes. Reopening the station has been proposed from time to time, but with its close proximity to Norwich Station, there would appear to be not much by way of benefit. Redeveloping the site is possible, but the money needed to restore the building's ruinous state would be sizeable. Add to this the restrictions that listing and its presence next to the railway would impose, there seems to be little to make redevelopment an appealing prospect. So maybe we should just enjoy it. And enjoy it while it lasts. Should any of the stations or railways featured in this film have closed? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And whilst you are here, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and follow Rediscovering Lost Railways.